brought to you by wellnessplus.tv and made possible by the generous donations of Psyche Truth Patreon supporters. Hey Yogi, welcome. Today I have an awesome video for you. It is power yoga, but we're specifically targeting twists so that we have a strong, stable spine, we're toning our midline, and we feel really confident about how we hold ourselves and how we look and how we feel. I've designed this entire video so that you don't need any equipment, but I do love the ab sliders, and a lot of the moves that I use in this yoga video can actually be enhanced if you use the ab sliders by Yoga Body. So I wanna thank Yoga Body for sponsoring this video. When it comes to yoga, we know that poses aren't the entire practice, but when we can find a tool that helps us feel really confident in things like our handstands and our headstands, and we feel really solid in our core, it definitely makes the experience much more enjoyable. I highly recommend that you check out their products like their ab sliders and also their handstand blocks. They can do wonders for you if you are working on some of those more advanced asana in your practice. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna come to tabletop. I don't wanna waste any time because we only have about 20 minutes to be together today, so let's get down to it. Let your shoulders stack over your wrists, your hips over your knees, tuck your toes, lift your knees. We're just gonna turn on the core, feel your belly button zip up into your spine. I like to start a lot of practices like this if I know that I'm short on time, just so that I'm turning everything on, legs, core, shoulders, arms. Take another breath in. Good, release your knees down. Keep your toes tucked, just stretch back into a modified child's pose. I just wanna stretch the bottom of your feet and kind of get some length through your arms. Good, so we call this tabletop a lot in our yoga practice. Over in the fitness world, sometimes they call this knees hovering a, a bear pose. So we're going to take bear pose and we're gonna add some twists. So with your knees hovering, just shift your knees to the right or left um, and allow the heels to kind of touch down. Good. Bring it back through center, but don't let your butt get too high, and then just shift. So it doesn't matter which side you do first, just find that lift and twist. Lift and twist. Good, so if that's really challenging, you just work with that. If you wanna add on, then it's lift, twist, and kick a leg through. Lift, twist, kick a leg through, maybe you lift a hand up. Good, and then just find some fluidity to it. And if you're like, whoa, this feels like twister, way too complicated, I'm not super duper coordinated with my rights and lefts, then you just come back to the twists. Not a big deal. Breathe through it. We're gonna go for four, three, two, this is almost done, I promise, one, and downward facing dog. Paddle your legs. So if you see poses like that and you think to yourself, never or I can't, you might as well give it a try just to prove yourself wrong. Take a deep breath in and then an open mouth exhale. And the best thing and something we always talk about in yoga is impermanence. So if anything is difficult, know that it's over in a flash and we move on. Take a breath in as you look forward. On your exhale, step your feet up to your wrists. We'll take a quick moment and a ragdoll pose here. Let your knees bend, dangle your ponytail, grab for opposing elbows. Deep breath in and out. If it feels good to release breath through your mouth like a little sigh, that can feel good in the body. We're working a lot with twists today because one of the most important things that our spine and our core strength does is to protect our spine when we shift directions and change load and change positions. So just staying in one plane of motion doesn't quite get the job done. So we're going to be moving in lots of different planes of motion and playing with course instability in lots of different poses. Take one more breath and then release your hands. Come all the way up to standing. Reach up, big stretch. And then step up to the top of your mat. Bring your hands to your heart. So let's build a little bit of heat and some sun A's. On your inhale, reach up. Soften your knees a little bit and then fold forward, exhale. 
Slide your hands to your shins, halfway lift. Step back to plank and then lower to chaturanga. If chaturanga is not in your practice, just hold high plank. Upward facing dog, move your ribs forward and press firmly down through your hands. Downward facing dog, lift your hips up and back. Deep breath in through your nose. Open mouth, exhale. We're gonna link breath to movement. Gaze forward, inhale. Step forward, exhale. Halfway lift, long spine. Fold and bow. Stand to your tallest, reach overhead. Forward fold, bowing from your hips. Halfway lift, lengthen your spine. Chaturanga, step back and lower halfway. Up dog, strong feet, strong hands. Downward facing dog, lift your hips up and back. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your mouth. One more round. Look forward, step forward. Halfway lift your chest. Fold, bow. Stand all the way up. Fold all the way back down. Lift halfway, step back to chaturanga, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in, open mouth sigh. Come forward to plank pose, good. And then we'll take some mountain climbers. So draw your right knee to your armpit and send it back. Left, back, right back, left, back. So just continue like you're marching. We won't add speed in this one. I want you to focus on the squeeze in and get your knee as high up on your arm as you can. So maybe it hugs your outer armpit. We'll be here for four, three, two, one. Push back to dog. And then drop down to your knees for a moment so you can just come off your wrists. Roll your wrists in little circles. Just refresh for a moment. Breathe in. Breathe out. Come to tabletop. And let's go back to it. Downward facing dog. Good. Slide your feet together. Lift your right foot up. And then step through to a lunge and come up to high crescent lunge. Lift your torso over your hips, bend your back knee a little bit, and reach your arms overhead. Bend your back knee until you feel that your pelvis comes to neutral. You can engage your back glutes slightly. And then as you begin to straighten your back leg, you'll feel nice big hip flexor release. Lift up out of your waist and allow your chest to slightly lift towards your wrists so you're tall. Big breath in, open to warrior two on your breath out. Allow your front heel to bisect your back arch. Reach up and out through your fingertips. Good, flip your front palm on your inhale. Reverse your warrior, stretch your right side body and deepen your lunge at the same time. As you exhale, cartwheel your hands down and step back to downward facing dog. Take a breath in and a breath out. Lift your left foot this time and then step it through to lunge so your foot's between your thumbs. Soften your back knee a little bit, come up to crescent. Stack your torso first, reach your arms up, and then find that little bit of engagement in the back leg so you go from a slightly bent knee to a straighter leg. Lift your waist and draw the front ribs in. Take one more breath here. Open to warrior two. As you sink down into your feet, lift through your crown. So you're always finding some space for your spine. Your drishti or your focus comes over your front hand or down to the tip of your nose. Flip your front palm on your inhale, reverse your warrior. You'll feel this lift up. If you notice that you're crunching on the back waist, lift those ribs up too. One more breath in. As you exhale, cartwheel your hands down, step back to downward facing dog. Take a breath in and a breath out. We're going to flow breath to movement with our legs. On your inhale, lift your right leg. 
On your exhale, step through to low lunge. On your inhale, reach to high lunge. As you exhale, warrior two. Inhale to reverse your warrior. Exhale to downward facing dog. Left foot will lift high. Exhale to step through. Inhale to your crescent. Exhale to warrior two. Inhale to reverse. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe in through your nose. Out through your mouth. One more time. Right foot high. Step through. High lunge, reach up. Warrior two, open up. Reverse your warrior. On your exhale, plant your hands. This time come to three leg dog. Lift your right leg as high as it can go. With your right leg high, open your hips to stack, bend your knee. Slightly, hello, mwah. Slightly turn out your left hand and then flip dog. So flip dog, you'll lightly carry your foot over. Feet will be about hips width distance. Lift up and out. Reach through your top hand. Good, to come back over, gaze down. Engage your core and lift your pelvis so you're coming over the shoulder joint and come back to downward facing dog. Let's do the other side. Left leg lifts high. Step through to lunge. Reach up to high lunge. Open up to warrior two. Inhale to reverse. Exhale, plant your hands. Three leg dog. Lift your left foot up. Open your hip to stack. Bend your knee and then flip your dog. So for flip dog, the knees are bent. Feet are hips width distance. Lift your pelvis, lengthen your waist, reach out of your top hand. Good, as you come back over, gaze down, lift up and over. Pedal your legs, settle your breath, settle your brain if everything went all wonky. Breathe in, come to stillness and breathe out. On your next breath in, lift your right leg high, step through to lunge, and come back up to that high crescent. So you've been here before, now pull your hands to your heart. Lengthen your spine just a little bit more. We talk about that a lot, and why? It's because if you're all compressed and crunched down, you're just pressing on your vertebrae in a way that doesn't feel good, and your low back starts to hurt. So when you draw in and lift up, puts a little space in your spine. You'll feel taller, stronger, and you won't have a pain in your back. So with your hands at your heart, start to turn over your right shoulder, and then reach your arms out. Good. Imagine you have a string on your head pulling you up to the ceiling, and weights in your feet pulling you down to the ground. Turn your gaze over your back thumb for a little bit of a balance challenge. Good, on your inhale, take your hands to your heart, return to center in your torso, and then shift your weight into your front foot, step up into a single leg mountain pose, bend into your right knee like you're sitting down in a chair, and slide your left leg over for eagle. Reach your arms up, and then eagle your arms by wrapping your left elbow under your right elbow. You can also take your hands to your shoulders if your wrists don't want to bind today. Sit down and back, Lift in and up. Good, unravel your hands to start. And on your next exhale, unravel your left leg, stamp it behind you, but keep a soft bend in your right knee. That way you're engaging muscle instead of just hinging on the hip or jazzing out your knee. Engage your lifted leg a lot, and now begin to expand the pose. Airplane your arms, take some of the bend out of your right knee, and glide your heart forward. Good, from here, drop your left hand and take your right hand to your low back. You can stay right here, especially if the challenge feels pretty intense. If you'd like to incorporate some of the twists that we're doing, then we'll take a revolved half moon. So from this position, turn your chest to the right and reach your right arm up. Stay very engaged through your back leg and pull your crown away from your lifted heel. Turn your rib cage, 
Good. And now bend into your right knee and step down into a revolved low lunge. Take one more breath in. On your exhale, plant your hand. Step back to downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let's do all of that on the other side. Lift your left leg. Step through to your lunge. Come up to your high lunge. Lift the waist long. Corkscrew your pinky fingers in. It'll give your shoulders a little bit of space. And then draw your hands to your heart. So hugging in through the inner thighs can help you find that deep core connection, as can drawing the belly button back so you feel all of that at the same time. And instead of just keeping that power down, lift up and out of your heart. Now turn over the left shoulder and reach your arms out. Find all four corners of your front foot. Strengthen your back leg. And as you maintain a deep lunge, lift the crown of your head up. Good, breathe. On your next inhale, return your hands to center. Shift your weight into your left foot and step up into single leg mountain pose. With your right knee up, begin to bend your left knee. Slide your right thigh down so you're an eagle in the legs. In eagle legs, this grounded leg is basically in a chair. So make sure you bend your knee, send your butt way back. Reach your arms up. And now bring your right elbow under your left elbow. Bind at your wrists or bear hug your arms. Draw the belly in and up. Lift the heart. And with a second you feel like, oh, I lift my heart. I'm going to stand up. Nope. Sit down. Good. Breathe. Squeeze your inner thighs. Stay with the heat of the legs. Good. Just unravel the arms. And now unravel the right leg into an airplane or Virabhadrasana three with your hands at your heart, this warrior three. Level out the hips and then wing the arms back and begin to straighten the left leg. A lot of power through your lifted leg helps. And if this is the challenge you want today, stay right here or drop your right hand. Perhaps dropping your right hand brings an element of twist that's new to you. And this is where you wanna pause with your left hand on your low back, or continue to revolve your chest to the left. Keep your right leg engaged and reach your left arm up. Good. Strong legs, long spine. Rotation comes from where there's ribs in the body. So it's a lot easier to twist our rib cage than it is to twist our low back or our hips. Take one more breath in. Bend into your left knee as you breathe out. Step your right foot back, but maintain the twist in your upper body. So that's a big challenge right there. Look up. And as you exhale, plant your hands. Step back to downward facing dog. Pedal out your legs. Breathe in. Breathe out. So look to your hands. Step your feet to your hands. Bring your feet about hips width distance, halfway lift with your feet hips width distance. Good, and then fold so your belly can come in between your thighs, bend your knees a lot. Let the back of your neck unravel. And then heel toe your feet together, sit back and come into chair pose so your thighs are together. And draw your hands to your heart. Lift your right side body just a little bit and then turn to your left and hook your right elbow to your left thigh in prayer twist. Good, so you can stay here in prayer twist, and this is plenty. If you'd like to take it a little bit further, hug your inner thighs and lift your heels. So if lifting your heels causes pain in your knee, put your heels back down, right? If lifting your heels just makes you a little bit wobbly and there's a challenge there, stay with it. If you'd like to take this a step further, sit your butt back towards your heels and shift your knees forward in a toe stand. You can stay right here in twisted toe stand, or you can snuggle your right armpit a little bit closer to your left thigh and drop your right hand down. Maybe this is where you wanna stay. If you'd like to come into side crow, step your left hand out, squeeze your inner thighs and lift your butt, and then send your elbows back and your chest forward. Maybe your toes don't lift off the ground. If you wanna take flight, hug your ankles, 
and lift your feet up. Take a breath here. Bring your feet back down when you're ready. Bring hands back together at heart center. Inhale to chair pose and exhale, release. Halfway lift your chest and forward fold. You know, I've been doing yoga for about 16 years of my life and there's still many, many, many days where side crow just feels so far away. So know that even if this is your first or 10,000th side crow, if it was challenging today, that's okay. There's still something to learn from it, okay? All right, come back to your chair pose. Let's try all of that on the other side. And sometimes the thing we learn is just like letting it go. It's just shapes, it's just party tricks. Take your hands to your heart, put a little extra space in your left side body and twist. Maybe stay right here in the prayer twist. I'm not super duper concerned if one knee shifts forward. I know we hear that cue a lot. I'm not super duper concerned. If your hips are shifting, it's because there's some sort of reason that your back is asking it to. But that may also indicate that that's as far as your twist is gonna go today. Focus instead on rotating from your ribs. Good, from there, if you are feeling really stable, spike your heels, sit your butt back, and send your knees forward. Good. So either pause here in your toe stand with a twist or snuggle that armpit a little bit closer to the outer thigh. Drop your hands, bend your elbows, squeeze your ankles like crazy. Hug in and look forward. Take another breath in and then drop your feet down. Return to your toe stand. Inhale to chair and exhale, big release. Let the back of your neck dangle. Lift your chest halfway, and then take a plank all the way down to your belly. Oh, that feels good. Place your forehead on your hands for a moment. Big breath, and let it go. And the truth is there are some poses that when I was in my early 20s, I could do no problem. And as I get older and this practice sort of evolves with me, some poses become hard. But it is a daily practice for getting strong. And it's not about just being able to do an arm balance. So no matter what you did, you did great. Take your hands behind your back, loop your shoulder heads back, lift your toes, send your knuckles back and come into a bound Shalambhasana. If lifting your toes causes low back pain, just bring them back down to the ground. Take one more breath in. Release down as you exhale and shift back to child's pose. <sighs> so we'll stay low from here on out. Just come on down to your back. As you flip over, <sighs> get yourself nice and soft and comfortable. We'll give a moment just to open up our hips soles of feet together where the knees can go wide. If you want to apply a little traction onto the tops of your thighs, you can do that. It feels really nice. Deep breath in. Let your belly fill. We've been sucking the belly in and back for a lot of this practice. Let your belly fill. Oh, let it go. Draw your thighs together. Hug your thigh bones down into your belly in Apanasana. We've already done plenty of rotation, so just sway side to side. Good, and then just relax it on out into Shavasana. Allow your whole body to get long. Crawl yourself out till you are just in a puddle on the floor. <sighs> Take a few deep breaths. So let's say you don't have five minutes or 10 minutes for Shavasana, give yourself 20 seconds. Give yourself the time to deeply breathe in and out. I know when I started doing yoga in my teen years, when I was 16, I thought Shavasana was such a waste of time. <laughs> and now it's the thing I look forward to the most. A couple more breaths. It's probably the thing we all need the most. But moving our energy in asana, moving our energy in the poses, 
Challenging ourselves is such a great way to shift our mindset so that we can really pause in Shavasana and enjoy. Good. <sighs> great, it's probably about all the time you have today, but it's time well spent. So walk your feet in, roll over to your side. You're gonna press yourself up. Let's meet with our hands at our heart. Thank you so much for showing up for yourself today. The most important thing with a yoga practice is consistency, but that doesn't mean that it has to be an hour, or an hour and a half every single day. Sometimes it's just 10 minutes. And in fact, I have an entire collection of power yoga videos in different durations over at the Yoga Plus app. You should download it. You can find tons of videos with me, including an entire 30 day yoga for weight loss challenge. So if that's up your alley, I'll see you there. I also want to send a huge thank you to our sponsors, Yoga Body. Their products are awesome and they're made by yoga teachers and people who are really passionate about helping people feel their best during their yoga practice. And like I said, asana is not the entirety of yoga, but it is such an important part for finding confidence inside and outside. So until the next video, namaste. Hi, I'm Julia, and I wanna invite you to join me for the next 30 days for a yoga for weight loss transformation. And for anyone out there who thinks that you can't lose weight doing yoga, well, you are in for a surprise. We're going to work and we're going to work hard, activating our big burner muscles in our legs and our glutes that are responsible for torching calories while we're on the mat and keeping our metabolism up when we're off the mat. And it's not just about the workouts. This program is jam packed with nutrition information and lifestyle tips that you'll find in the bonus videos, as well as meditation classes built right into the program so that you have a holistic approach to your health. You are going to end this 30 day program with the tools you need to feel fit for life. So check it out at wellnessplus.tv or on Amazon. See you on your mat. Thank <laughs> you.